Well, hello everybody. Joy here. It is Wednesday already in this week. It is July 22nd, 2015. And I guess I'm going to start making beading videos. <laughs> so I'll have sewing videos, fitting videos, uh, quilt videos, and beading videos. Now, I have to tell you right up front, uh, and Ann, my friend Ann will know this, um, I, I'm not going to do tutorials. It's just silly for me to do tutorials. There are so many YouTube video tutorials that are awesome. They're, it's just silly for me to even try. Um, my favorite ones are Jill Wiseman, W-I-S-E-M-A-N. And the reason um, hers are my favorite is she's the only one from all the ones I've watched that shows her face and her body and her real person as she's doing the beading. So she's got very, very close up of the table and the beads that she's working on, but then there's a picture in picture where it shows her working on it. And in the beginning, she always shows herself up close and introduces herself, and I like that. I like to know the people who are talking to me. I like to see their face. I like to see their hands. Usually do see their hands. I like to see what they have on. I like to see what their room looks like behind them. You know, if you've read my blog very long, I'm a major people person. I love people. I especially love grannies. Oh my goodness. I had the sweetest little granny you ever saw. Her name was Hattie. And she wasn't very tall. Of course, you know, she was already a granny when I knew her. So maybe she was taller when she was younger. I don't know. But her name was Hattie. And she was the cutest, cutest thing. Her hair was very long to her waist. She had thin gray hair and she thought it was a sin to cut her hair. And so she never cut it. And so it was just a long, long, long string. She just rolled it all up in a bun. Well, as her grandkids got older, we convinced her that she wasn't gonna go to hell if she cut her long stringy gray tail off of her hair. So she got her hair cut short and she got it permanent. She looked real cute then. She also thought that we were all major sinners because we wore pants. It was the 50s and the 60s, you know, and girls started wearing pants. Well, Granny never, ever wore pants, even when she was working out in the field, in the garden, scrubbing the floors, didn't matter. She thought she had to wear a dress. Well, we also were able to convince her, I think, I think my sisters will have to confirm this, but I think maybe she started wearing pants. Maybe she never did. I can't really remember that part, but... Um, Anyway, my point is, I'm a people watcher and I especially love grannies. There was one at Walmart the other day, Terry and I, I went shopping to Walmart to buy our groceries. We go together now almost all the time. And um, uh, she and I were both done checking out and so we met on the other side of the cash registers uh, so we could go out to the car together. Well, while we were standing there, I was talking about something and I noticed this darling granny checking out at the cash register. She must have been 85, 90 years old. Her hair was totally white. She had it pulled up in a bun in the back and she had on the prettiest ironed red dress. Had a pleated skirt and it was red with some kind of little print in it. She looked so, so nice. I wanted so much to just go over there and hug her and say, are you all alone? Do you wanna come home with me sometime? <laughs> But I didn't. So anyway, when we were driving home, I don't know why I'm telling you all this in a beating video, but when we were driving home, Terry's mom called her. And you know, we have these new cars that when somebody calls, you can hear them talking right in the car if you want to, the speakers in the car. And so her mom called and her mom was so sweet to her. She said, oh baby, how are you doing? And Terry said, I'm real, we're driving home. And she said, oh, well, I don't wanna bother you while you're driving. And Terry said, well, mom, I'll call you after a while. And her mom said, well, goodbye, baby. And I said, oh my gosh. I said, my mom's never called me baby in my whole entire life. Your mom sounds so sweet. So she said, next time she goes to Muskogee to visit her mom and her mom's mother, who is a major granny, I've seen pictures of her, she says she's gonna take me with her. I've seen pictures of her granny and she is the cutest thing, still lives by herself, but she lives somewhere near her mom. So she said next time she goes to visit them, she's gonna take me with her. So anyway, what was my entire point? <laughs> oh, well, let me see, you know, I'm almost 65 in just a few more days. Uh, let me see, what was I in the middle of telling you? Oh, I had a video the other day 
about my linked squares bracelet. Okay, so this is for people that are new beaters and don't know a lot about how to find out about designs. This book is called Beating with Crystals by Campbell and Amon, A-I-M-O-N-E, Beating with Crystals. And I had this project completely put together. And as I was putting it together, my husband, I showed it to him, and he said he really liked it, but he said, I think it would be better if you did such and such. I said, oh, well, that's not the way it's supposed to do. You're not supposed to do it that way, so I'll do it that way next time. I'll try it. <laughs> well, duh. I should have known. I should have listened to him. The directions are as clear as mud. I'm telling you, don't you hate the directions in some patterns and lots of books? They, I don't know if they're trying to save space, save pages, or what, but they are so poor. And I have read page 75, the instructions for this bracelet, over and over and over and over and over. And you know how I found out what I was doing wrong? From this little tiny picture right here. That's how I found out what I was doing wrong. It's as simple as, instead of starting in this bead, you start in that bead. So, read your directions. I'm not the type to write in books. I don't know why. <laughs> but I decided to get a pen and write in this book. So next time if I make this bracelet again, I can understand the instructions. So anyway, I had to cut my bracelet. I had it completely made. And I had to cut it all apart and start over. So anyway, here I am on my second version. And if you make this, Read the directions really carefully. Um, I also wanted to tell you the name of this little square. This square is as rare as hen's teeth out there in the jewelry world. I don't know why it is so hard to find. And if you Google it, it'll say it doesn't exist. It has the strangest name. I'm not sure I can even remember it without looking at my uh, information I sent to Ann. But I think it is called Crystal passions square ring now isn't that the goofiest name i mean would you ever put that if you were googling it that it was a square ring a square is a square and a ring is a circle right so it doesn't make any sense but i'll tell you two places that sell it it is a swarovski crystal crystal passion square ring and this color is golden shadow they, I have found them at Fire Mountain Gems, although I googled it there and couldn't find it either. So if you don't put the exact right thing in, also it's 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So be sure to put in there 20 mm. So if you go to uh, Fire Mountain to find it there or at Fusion Beads, I found it at Fusion Beads, be sure you put 20 millimeter X for buy, 20 millimeter Crystal Passions Square ring and I'm pretty sure that it will come up if you put that in there okay if not leave me a comment and I'll go to my uh, receipt where I bought it and I'll tell you a number for it okay all right so I wanted to tell you that and then I wanted to tell you another uh, really nice tip but I think I'll do it on a separate video so you won't have to uh, whoever watches it won't have to listen to my granny speech okay so this is Joy signing out for now be back soon Bye.